Big news out of Ubuntu. They're officially switching Pulse Audio out for Pipewire. And I'm here on Ubuntu's Discourse where it's been officially confirmed. That's right, as of today, Kinetic ISO has been updated to only run Pipewire and not Pulse Audio. It says in Jammy, the current version of Ubuntu has both Pipewire and Pulse Audio running. And that's because Pulse Audio is being used for audio, but Pipewire is being used for video. This is big news as a bunch of Linux distros have already made the switch because it seems a lot of people believe that Pipewire does work better than Pulse Audio and they keep developing themselves to further push the audio processing subsystems of Linux. But let's briefly discuss what both Pulse Audio and Pipewire multimedia frameworks do. I'm here on the Pipewire project website where it describes how these frameworks help us process our audio and multimedia and do some of the following things including capturing and playing back audio and video, real-time media processing of audio and video, multi-process architecture that allows applications to share multimedia content, seamless support for Pulse Audio, Jack, Ulsa, and GStreamer applications, and Sandbox application support using flat packs. So the claims here are that Pipewire, which serves on our system, I'll call it PW, as a way to process multimedia audio, has less latency, meaning the time between when something starts to when it actually gets captured and begins is less than Pulse Audio. It also claims to use less resources, including but not limiting to CPU usage. So now you should be able to get more out of your CPU. That way it's not busy processing information from your multimedia frameworks and less dropouts. That means occasionally in your signal, as pipe wires trying to produce it and sample it, there occasionally will be a portion of that signal that gets dropped out and not replicated for your ears to hear and or see. So you can imagine dropouts are very bad. If you lose a bunch of the signal, you're not going to very reliably reproduce that signal. And the reason this is big news for Ubuntu at least is that they've been avoiding going over to Pipewire while many Linux distributions have already made the switch to Pipewire instead of using Pulse Audio. And I'm sure this will leave a lot of people happy that they're at least trying things out. Let's also check out the GitHub repo, which is located here, and see for those of us who are interested, more mention of the project. And here is the project, and here is the open source projects repo. Pipewire is a server and user space API to deal with multimedia pipelines. As we mentioned before, a framework for multimedia handlings, making available sources of video, accessing sources of video for consumption, generating graphs for audio and video processing, and much more. The most important purpose of Pipewire is to run your favorite applications. And most applications can use either Alza, Jack, or Pulse Audio as a backend. Pipewire provides support for all of these three backends and depending on your distribution, it automatically works things out, which is a fantastic thing. Are you ready to start learning about Linux today? Check out my Linux checklist and cheat sheet at learn.savvynick.com. There's a link below. So back on the Ubuntu forum where we can look forward to this change in Ubuntu 22.10, which is going to have plans using Pipewire. This should come somewhere in October with it being a .10 release, meaning the 10th month or October of 2022. For those of you that simply cannot wait, you can absolutely install Pipewire on your Ubuntu system today if you wanna try it out. As mentioned in here on the forum, there's already Pipewire and Pulse Audio running. You'll have to make some tweaks in order to only have Pipewire as your multimedia processing server, but it's actually required. As it says, for things like screencasting and screen sharing on Wayland. So to keep things moving, Ubuntu has finally decided it's time to make the switch entirely. Definitely let me know if you're excited about the switch. And I want to give you another resource to look at, which as always gives a more in-depth and great description of the Pipewire framework and mentions things such as installation, configuration, usage, processing, and even troubleshooting. And that's on the Arch Linux wiki. Of course, this doesn't just apply to Arch Linux because the wiki goes into 
depth quite a bit and is a great resource for all who want to learn more about Pipewire and anything at that that involves the Linux kernel or various different Linux based operating systems. I'll put a link in the description below, so make sure to check that out. A lot of us like learning about these things and how it can further improve our systems whenever we use Linux. It's always awesome to see what the open source community can bring us and how they further better our usage of our hardware that we have. Make sure to think a developer today or go and contribute to a project. You don't have to be a programmer to contribute to projects. There's plenty of ways to do it, including writing documentation, fixing spelling mistakes, art, and so much more. And if you just want to learn about things, of course, the Arch Wiki is an amazing place to start. Well, if you have any questions, comments, or suggestions, please make sure to post them in the comments section below. Also, make sure to subscribe below, hit that notification bell for more Linux and programming videos. Catch me in a great community on Discord, and I'll catch you in another video. Thanks for watching.